In this video, I'm going to take an export from Google Analytics, which just shows overall traffic over time, and we're going to create a scrolling chart with it. When it's all finished and fully formatted, which I'm not going to do all the formatting in this video, I've covered that in other videos, it's going to look like this, where you can just scroll and see a year at a time. And you'll see that this chart starts in January 2009. And if I click on the arrow, it advances one month at a time uh, or goes back a month. And if I click anywhere in the scroll bar, it advances 12 months. So it's a pretty cool chart, especially in a dashboard where real estate is prime. So let's go back to our raw data. Now, I typically use the Google Analytics API, so my export is going to look a little different uh, than if you use the export from the user interface, but it's fine. As long as you have column headings like this, you're fine. So first what we're going to do is pull out the metrics that you actually want to chart. So from this data dump, I really just need month, visits, and this says transaction revenue because it came from the API. And I'm just going to shorten that to revenue. The only reason I highlighted these in yellow is just so I can easily see that this is 12 rows here. Because what we're going to do is we're going to take this large data set. And you'll see here if I control down arrow, it goes all the way to June 2013. I'll do control up arrow to get back up to the top. And what we want to do is create a subset of that data set that just has 12 rows in it. And so with that, we're going to go ahead and get started. So first off, I'm going to give myself an extra row here. We're just going to put the number one in here. I don't need that formatted. I'm just going to bump that down. And that will be more clear as we go along. At this point, it's really just a placeholder. So what we're going to do is, as I mentioned in the blog post, the best function to use to pull together a, a subset of your data set is the index function. And basically what that does is it just says, OK, what's the array that you want to pull from? And what's the row number? And we're going to use this number up here in V3 as the row number. Okay, so first let's go get our array. So this is the month. So we're going to go back to raw data. We don't need the heading. We're just going to click the first value and then control shift down arrow, command shift down arrow if you're on the Mac. And that's going to pull from the raw data tab, that's where we are. F5 to F58, which is exactly what we want. Except we're going to take F58 and we're going to use F4 to lock that down because that's the last row that we want. It'll actually work even if you don't lock it down, but it's not technically correct. Okay, so this we're not going to lock down because when we pull this down, we want this to advance to F6, F7, F8. But we want to keep this at F58 because that's where our data set ends. And then we're going to put a comma in here and go back. If you don't put that comma in, then, oh, excuse me, that's where we want it to be. If you don't put that comma in, then it's going to update raw data to uh, the chart, which we don't want. So just put the comma in before you go back. Okay, and then. For our row number, we're just going to choose this and lock it down. And we don't need the column number. Okay, So that's going to choose the first value, January 2009. If I just pull a random value in here, then it's going to pull the 20th row, start at the 20th row. We don't want that. We're just going to start at 1. And we're going to drag this down. And so now you see we have the first year. And we're going to do the same with visits. So we're just going to get index here. If you start to type it in, 
and on the PC, if you hit tab, it will choose the function that you want on the Mac. You can't tab because Excel for Mac is lame, so you have to actually use your down arrow to select it or just type it all the way. And then we're going to go and get the array for visits. I'm just going to do control up arrow to get where I want. Control shift down arrow once again. Now watch what happens if I choose chart before putting the comma in. If I put the comma in to select the next argument, it will keep raw data. If I don't, and I click back on chart, you'll see it's going to choose chart, which we don't want. So we're going to go back here, insert the comma. Now when we go to chart, it's fine. We really don't need chart on this one because it's on the same sheet. And we're going to choose this again and lock it down. And now we can just double click to send it down because it's going to match the number of rows. And last up, we're going to do the same thing with revenue. Index. Here. Control up arrow to get to the top. Hit the comma. Go back. We don't need the chart. It's fine if you have it. And then F4 to lock that down. Oh, and on the Mac, to lock it down is Command T. Now, I already formatted these rows ahead of time. So that's why they're coming in fully formatted. But you can see over here, I'll just make this one other note. Dates don't come out of the API looking like this. They come out with year and month. And in the user interface, as I show in the blog post, they actually come out as YYYYMM for year and then month. But I direct you to a blog post that shows you how to fix that. In this one, I'm using the date function. You can see it up here, or I'll press F2 on the PC uh, to show the function. And this is just saying, what's the year? Okay, well, here's the blue, here's the year. And the month is pulling from this column here. And then I just set the day to the first day of the month. Because when I format this, so I press Control-1 to format, you'll see I use a custom format here that just says MMM space YY. And that's basically going to disregard the day and just give me the year and the month, which is exactly what I want. Okay, so now that we have all of this in our table, we're ready to create a chart. So we're just going to go up to Insert, Line. We're going to give ourselves a little bit of room here. Right off the bat, I just have to move this to the top. Okay, now I'm not going to go through all the steps that I took to format this so that it finally looks like this. These are my company's branded colors because I cover that, like I said, in quite a few tutorials. But what we are going to do is add the scroll bar. So to do that, we're going to go to Developer, Insert, and we want this one here, scroll bar. And we'll just pull this down like so. And as long as you have these handles around the outside, you can just click it and drag it where you want. I typically like it bumped up against the chart. I think that looks a little better. And I'll just... I can tend to be a bit of a perfectionist, but I'll try to control myself. Okay, so to format it, what you want to do is right-click and choose Format Control. Now, like I said in the blog post, this is a little dicey when you're not used to it. But 
it does make sense after you've worked with it for a while, and I will provide this download in the blog post so that you can download it and kind of poke around a bit. And if it doesn't seem intuitive to you, then you just need to save this tutorial in Evernote or bookmark it and refer back to it whenever you need to create a scroll chart. To be honest, that's what I usually have to do because I don't create them that often. So we're just going to set the current value to 1. That's what we have it up here. And our minimum value is 1. I happen to know that I have 43 months from January 2009 to June 2013 is 43 months. But you want to make sure that if you include this in a monthly dashboard, you have to go in and update this maximum value each month or it's not going to pull in your last month of data. The incremental change is how many months you want it to update when you hit one of these arrows. So I just set that to one so that if I hit one of the, the forward arrow or the back arrow that it just uh, progresses or moves back one month at a time. And then the page change is how many months you want it to update when you click anywhere between where it's currently selected and the next arrow. And so since we're showing one year at a time, I generally set that to 12. And then the cell link is what cell you want this number to generate to. And then what I do is I'll cover this up. I'll take the chart and move it over so that people don't see this. And in the event that they do, I'll even change this number here to white font so that they don't see under the hood what's going on, that you can do whatever you want. I'm all about aesthetics. So now you'll see what happens. We have to click off of it to deselect it. So if I click anywhere along this scroll bar to the right, it's going to progress one year at a time. So we went from January 2009 to January 2010, January 2011, January 2012, etc. If I just click the arrow, it will just progress or digress one month at a time. So now all you have to do is format your chart and you're good to go.